Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Stay tuned to hear more about all that Skillshare has to offer. Hello everyone, welcome to Pencil Stash and happy holidays. Very excited that you guys are joining me today. And in true holiday season, I received a package at my doorstep and this one is specifically to Pencil Stash. Now I know what's in here and I'm very, very excited to try these out. I've never used them, so it's going to be a complete experiment, uh, but I'm very excited to share it with you guys. So if you're interested and wanna know what's in here, stick around. All right, I think we're through some of this packaging. Oh, cool. Let's chuck that. So I was uh, basically approached by this company, Hippie Crafter, and I just love the name. It's very cute. And uh, they have a line of um, the coloring and art supplies, and I chose to test the watercolor brush pens. They, you know, essentially just wanted to see if I would, uh, you know, be willing to try something out, and I'm like, sure. I love watercolor, definitely not something that I'm super familiar with, but I really want to kind of incorporate into my coloring, incorporate into my art, and so I thought that watercolor brush pens would sort of be a really good entrant into kind of trying to do that. So I'm not familiar with, you know, a lot of painting techniques and whatnot. So I think this is a good kind of happy medium between something I'm familiar with and something that I'm trying to get into. So again, this uh, brand is Hippie Crafter. I will be leaving a link down in the description and I will be leaving a very honest review. Um, you know, there's been no compensation here. They just kind of sent me these uh, to test out and give an honest opinion. So let's open these up. <clears throat> these are cool. Ooh, very pretty colors. <clears throat> All right, let's see if we can kind of arrange these nicely to take a look at them. So these are like individual little marker pens. Let's grab, let's grab this purple one. I have like a weird cap on them. Hang on, there we go. Easier to push out from the bottom. So these are very much like little watercolor markers and they have kind of an interesting cap on them. Hopefully it just kind of keeps them nice and dry. It's a really nice kind of tight fit. So um, nice little brush tip on the end. Looks very juicy. I'm very excited to kind of give these a go. The color range is quite lovely. I don't know if you guys can like really see the beautiful kind of array of colors that we've got here. And again, there's two trays. There's 50 colors in total. Look at that one, that berry color. That's beautiful. So the other thing that these come with is two watercolor pens. Now I've used these in some more like traditional uh, watercolor brush painting and these essentially have like a reservoir at the back but I've never used anything like this the one that I have has like a little bit of like a squeeze in the middle that you can kind of control the flow of water this one does not so I'm not sure gonna be a little bit of a learning curve but that's okay but this one uh, basically just use it for water it has a little bit more of an elongated tip and uh, some more gnarly bristles. It doesn't quite come to a tip like these do, but it's definitely, uh, you know, controllable. So we will be testing these out as well. Now, the first thing that I like to do when testing out a new product is to see what colors we have. So let's go ahead and get a piece of watercolor paper and we will uh, test these out. All right, I found my watercolor paper and I would really like to test these out. I also filled my little water brush pen with water. These literally just unscrew here and just creates this little reservoir and you just fill it with water and then screw it back in and then it'll sort of like flow out here and it will dampen your brush bristles. So very cool. And again, I have no idea what I'm doing. So let's just lay some color down and see what we get. I love the color of this first one. It's so neon. And all I'm gonna do is just sort of put down a little bit of a swatch of each color 
and let them dry and then I will come back over that with a little bit of my water brush pen and just kind of see what we get. Alright, so initial impressions are very good. Um, a lot of these laid down really nicely, very buttery. Some of them even have sort of a watercolor effect on them right when you apply them to the page. And then others sort of have a little bit more of like a chalky texture. It was weird. I don't know why there's a difference, but you can kind of tell on this one, a little bit on that one. And then this one just laid down like a beautiful watercolor brush. So I think there's a little bit of a difference based on the color that you get or maybe the formula that they're using or I don't know, maybe one of them was having a bad day. Um, and there does seem to be some doubles. So like, for example, I'm trying to find like these two pinks, I think are the same. Um, there was definitely some that struck me. Maybe these two pinks, not a huge deal, but definitely you know, these two blues, that kind of thing. So again, not a huge deal, but you know, says 50 colors, not sure if uh, these are just slightly different or uh, if they are uh, just kind of doubles. Now let's take our watercolor brush and I'm just going to activate it. This is a squeezy. Uh, it's just here at the back. I'm used to having it right here, but it's actually back here. So you just sort of squeeze and it sort of pushes water through the sort of mechanism up here and then it just sort of makes your bristles a little bit wet. You can kind of tell in my hand right there. So what I'm gonna do, let's take like a real nice, pretty juicy one. Let's do this pink. And I'm just going to lay down a little bit of this water just to reactivate kind of the water soluble aspect of the marker ink here. And you can see we can just sort of blend out the marker bits and push some of this color around. This is pretty cool. Very nice. And if you can, you can sort of get rid of the edges as you push. And you'll see like as you push, it sort of just gets lighter and lighter until it's almost no more. Very pretty. And that's just based on how much water I was using. I think if you use a lot more water, you can get even more of a watercolor effect. Yep. So if you've ever used watercolor, you can kind of apply those same principles and techniques. And then I always like to keep a, a scrap piece of uh, watercolor paper or even paper towel kind of over here just to clean off my brush because you do not want your fuchsia getting in with your other colors. So now that I know kind of what my colors look like, I can save this as a little bit of a color chart so that I'm not guessing. Um, and now I kind of want to try these out on a coloring page. Now the problem that we are going to have is that coloring with paper is not typically for watercolors. Usually watercolor paper is a lot thicker, a lot, um, more absorbent. So we're gonna see what we get. I'm gonna go look through my coloring books and see if we have kind of a good one to test these out on. And uh, we'll just kind of see. All right, so I went through my coloring books and I really tried to find something that had really nice paper and perhaps some good subject matter to kind of test out our brushes. So I found this book. This is a book that I got a really, really long time ago. I think it was even maybe a gift, but it's um, Everything Beautiful. And it is a collection of quotes and kind of religious, like inspirational quotes. It's very pretty. Um, the subject matter is varied, the style is varied, uh, but the quotes are very cool. And I really like it because the opposite side doesn't have an image on it. So hopefully we won't be pulling any image or ink from the other side up through our page because water has a tendency to make that happen. So the page that I pulled out is this one. It is a quote by Annie Downs. It says, I am trying and will be trying every day for the rest of my life to look for lovely in the simplest places and grandest and the grandest moments. And I really like this page because I think that the 
sort of little spaces for our watercolor will be very pretty. And I think that we can kind of try to maybe start dark and then like pull to the right. And this might be a good test page. So I think that this one will be fun. And it's just fun to kind of pull out an old coloring book once in a while. And the one thing I am going to do, I just hate having like stuff ruin my desk. So I'm gonna color on the back of this coloring book just to have a little bit of a barrier. All right, I also have nearby my little color chart so that I can tell what colors are what because the bottom of the barrel isn't necessarily accurate. And I have my watercolor brush pen here and a paper towel just to kind of brush it off. So we're starting with a clean slate here. And now I just kind of have to go through and decide what colors I really want to use. Um, I think I'm definitely gonna use some of these greens, but I really kind of want to go nice and bright. I really like a lot of the brightness of some of these. Like I love this purple. I love this plum color. I love this orange, this yellow. So I think we're gonna maybe just pull out my favorites and kind of create a little mini palette from this. So let's do that first actually, cause then I can kind of maybe pick out some of these and put them in here. So the cutoff was right here and I definitely want this yellow. So we're gonna pull this yellow out and I definitely want both of those greens right next to these. So that'll be good. We'll just put those here. And then I think I definitely want this orange, which I think is this one. Yep. Okay. And I definitely want that plum color that I liked. And then maybe this one. This one is so pretty. And maybe this one. Then we can kind of keep it a little civil. Let's at least start there and then we can always pull out our color chart once again and uh, pick out some additional ones. And this is manageable. I don't even think I need my tray. All right, so the first thing I think I want to start with is maybe some of my greens just to maybe do a couple of these uh, leaves here. So, and actually I'm gonna start over here. Actually, you know what, let's start right here in the middle. Now what I'd like to do is just sort of start here at the bottom and just lay some down, maybe on the first half. And then we can sort of activate our water brush and just kind of see what a little dragging gets us. I may want to let that dry real quick, or maybe while it's wet. We might have to experiment a little bit. Let's try this next one. And I'm gonna to try to pull up a little color. Oop, she's bleeding. She is bleeding. It's okay. Let's just let this one dry for a minute and we'll kind of see what we get. I'll do a little experimenting. All right, it's been a minute and let's see what we get here. So I'm just going over this with just the water. Man, this one is not moving. You know, and I kind of expected that, like the pink moved really well, but just the difference in the way that the brushes were laying down makes me think that maybe there's like a difference in how they were going to react once we added water. So, all right, well, that's a bummer. What we might be able to do is maybe we try, like this one should be fairly dry now. Let's try maybe this darker green over the bottom and let's see if we can kind of blend these two. Oh, that works. That works nicely. Okay. All right, so I think, I think we saved it. So what I think I'm gonna do is just color over all of these leaves in the light green, and then we can come back in the darker green and just add a little bit of visual interest at the bottom. And we're just gonna have to experiment and that's okay. I fully support experimenting with your coloring. It can be fun, especially when you're trying out a new medium. I do really like this green. It's super bright, super fun. It actually goes on really buttery and I really like the brush tip. It's not just a bullet nib, it's an actual brush tip. All right, we'll give those just a minute 
and we'll do the other side. All right, let's go back in with our green and I'm just gonna do a couple little flicks. And I'm gonna work kind of small and I'm just gonna sort of push that around a little bit with the water. Yeah, that works really nice actually. All right, I'm learning a little bit as we go here. And as I use this, I'm just trying to like reactivate the ink and just let it go where it wants. I'm trying not to push it too much. That looks very pretty. I do like that. Awesome, I love that. That looks really, really good. So let's put our greens aside and let's pull out, I kind of like these up here maybe. Let's try, let's try something different. So again, I just kind of want to see if I can get one of these to actually move into just a white space. So took my fuchsia, just kind of did like two thirds of that little petal there. And oh, do I try it when it's still wet? Yeah, that just does not want to go. <laughs> Maybe it's the paper. I mean, this is not watercolor paper. So I think that we have to expect it's going to act a little bit differently. Let's try the next thing. So instead of doing that, I'll just do a really light layer over the petal. I say light layer as I completely saturated but it's all good let's let that dry for a second and then we'll come back and i'm going to try something different let's just go over this with the water brush right now just to kind of blend it a little bit maybe pick up some of that that color okay now we're going to let it dry it's pretty dry now i'm going to go in with the same color and i'm just going to add a little bit of extra color here at the top and just a little bit at the ends, just to get a bit of a gradient in between. And then just very lightly, I'm gonna try to blend the two together. It's subtle. Let's try again over here. This is kind of what I want, but I just want really, really lightly blend. Okay, that worked a little bit better. So maybe that's our play. Instead of doing the entire thing, we kind of do what we did before. Maybe we can even do this. Yeah, let's try this one, hang on. We're just experimenting. Yeah, it does not like being activated like right away. It really does not, at least on this paper. So I think I'm gonna go all the way around and just do two thirds like we did before to kind of try to recreate that one. Then we'll come back in one at a time with an almost dry brush and just try to like very lightly reactivate this. It's definitely reactivating the purple, but man, it does not want to go into that white space. That doesn't look bad though, but let's let it dry. I do like the way that this looks, so maybe we'll do that somewhere else, but just because we've already done these other ones, I'm going to go back in and do the other end and just see if we can create that almost light gradient in the middle. Okay, well, I think we had varying levels of success there, but it was definitely fun to experiment. So let's move on and try something else. I, I kind of liked a little bit of that white space, so let's try this orange. And all I wanna do is just do a little ring around each of these berries and we'll see if we can create a nice little either lighter middle or a white space in between. I'm trying not to add too much water to this paper just because I really don't think that I can handle it. Okay, that didn't really move anything. Man, now I kind of want to see what will happen if I try to blend 
two colors together that are not similar. So we did it with the green, but I really wanna see if we can maybe do something with this. And you know what, maybe we do it on these. So I think I think the, the best thing to do is avoid white space. So what I'm gonna do is just color the entire petal in yellow. Then we'll give that a minute. Then I'm gonna come back in, and I think I'm gonna do the, the bottoms. And just add a little bit of orange, just like we did on the leaves. We'll let that dry. Just a second. And then we'll push it up. Okay, that's, uh, I mean, it's definitely reactivating. Yeah, that worked. I like that. It got a little muddy, kind of in the middle there, but nothing too crazy. I like that. And I think we're kind of creating some color story. So I think we can definitely translate all of these yellows, uh, or I'm sorry, all of these yellow and oranges kind of around the page uh, on the rest of these. And then we can kind of just tackle some, some stuff as we go. I do want to try, I think, the two purples that I got, because I really, really like these. Um, so we'll definitely do that, but I do I do want to go around the page and maybe just kind of complete some of the things that we've already started. So, for example, I'll go in and do all of these little daisy flowers, and then we can kind of see what we have left. Because again, I want to limit my color palette, and I don't want to just start kind of going around willy-nilly before I realize kind of everything that I want to do. All right, I'm going to hold off on the green, kind of adding that to some of the leaves on the edges, just because there's so many of them. And I'm thinking that if I do them all in this green, it might just get a little bit too green and I might want to add in a bit more color later. So I'm just going to hold off for now and we'll just sort of start to fill in. Now, the one thing that I do really want to do, um, when I was doing my swatches, I love this like super dark navy, gray black kind of color and i think that would look really good as kind of the um i don't even know what these are called but like the center of our little daisies i think that that'll add just kind of a nice little dark spot so i'm going to do that but then i think i'm going to start to add in just a little bit more of like other mediums i'm going to grab my oh yeah that's like black <laughs> that's okay um, I'm going to go back in with my white gel pens and just add a little bit of uh, kind of visual interest. All right, I am loving how the addition of my white jelly roll pen just on these little dark uh, kind of center of these uh, daisies just looks so, so cute. I love it. Um, now I want to see what happens when I do something creative with two very different colors, um, not very different, but there's like a fuchsia and a purple. Um, and I think I wanna do it on maybe these leaves here and just kind of see what we get. And I'm a little bit afraid, but I think I'm just going to do something kind of splotchy and then see kind of what we get. I'm just gonna see if there's maybe one like off in a corner to maybe try, but no such luck. So let's just, let's just jump, jump in, it's fine. It's fine. We'll just kind of see what we get. So I am literally just going to lay down some of that light purple. And then while it's still wet, just kind of come back in here and do the rest because Lord knows we can't leave any white space. It does not like the white space. At least, again, I think it's just this paper. So we got nice and splotchy. Let's let that dry. And then we'll come back in and reactivate it and see if we can maybe either blend those colors together, or it might make a weird third color. I'm not quite sure what to expect. So let's, uh, let's just see what we get. All right, let's, uh, let's see what we get here. Gonna reactivate my water brush. Ooh. I'm gonna start with my light colors and just cause I don't want a random third color, I'm gonna start with my light colors and just sort of try to push some of this around. Okay, all right, we're not getting a weird third color. That's good. Yeah, it just kind of blended the two together. Okay, good. That's what I was hoping for. Not expecting, <laughs> but hoping for. So let's go ahead and let's do that um, over these other ones. I kind of like the, the lighter pink more than the dark. So maybe we'll just kind of play with the ratios. 
All right, I like that. It's a little odd, but I do definitely like the just kind of bright infusion of color that we get from it and it's visually interesting. So next I want to add a little bit of this kind of rusty red color. I think that that will be just kind of a nice addition as we, uh, as we go. And actually, you know what? I'm kind of thinking maybe we add in, okay. So this color, this is very deceiving because it's actually this color. I wonder if maybe we could use this color and then this over it, or if we maybe want to go this route and go this over it. Mm. Let's go bold. Let's, let's do this one and this one and just kind of see what we get. And I think I want to do that on these kind of, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll save those. Oh, this is always the indecision. Like I kind of know what colors I want to use, but where is always the interesting part because my fear is if we do these these leaves there's just so many and if this doesn't work it's going to be the entire page so maybe we just do it on the ones that have a line through the center that'll be a nice kind of delineation point let's do it right here again we have a little spot kind of down in the corner that we can maybe pivot away from if if something goes terribly, terribly wrong. Yeah, let's just do this one. So I'm just gonna do an all over layer of this lovely orange, and then we'll come right in and I kinda wanna do like one half. Is that crazy? Why don't we do one half of one half? We'll do a quarter, just for a little bit of visual interest. And then right away, I'm gonna come in and see if I can kind of move this around and just see what we get. We're getting a little bit of movement there, a little bit of muddy, but let's see what we get. I really just want this, this edge to, while we wait, let's do another one. I do think it might be smart to wait until each layer kind of dries and then come back because I think I'm just adding a little bit too much water to the uh, equation at the same time instead of slowly introducing it in phases, which I think will serve us better. So let's go ahead and just do all of the orange and then we'll come back and do all of the red and then we'll come back and do the water addition because these are wet as well. All right, we've got orange on all of our half leaves and I just have to fix this. It's just not right. So I think we'll just sort of try to do something like that where it just kind of tapers. But before I do it on any others, I'm going to I'm going to wait. I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to see what I can do to salvage it. I do like the color. Okay, let's see uh see what we get here. Again, I don't want a super wet brush. That's how you get little bleeding. Um but I do want to just see if I can soften some of this. When that dries, I think that's going to be just just kind of what we were looking for. So I'm gonna do a little variation on that on all of these. And I'm gonna keep switching the sides. So like on this one, I did the, the red on the right. I'm gonna do this one on the left. All right, I mean, they don't blend as much as I would like. It's definitely like better if you have very similar colors, like the greens and the yellow and orange did really, really well. The red and the orange, it's okay. Definitely not uh, perfect. So what I think I might do is maybe try a bit of a transition color. I don't know if it's going to work, but maybe on some of these that I'm kind of really struggling with, like maybe this one, instead of just kind of trying to keep blending this with water, I might try just a little bit of a transition and we'll see if that works. So I just put that down just a little bit and try to feather it out real gently and uh, we'll let that dry and then we'll come back in here in a moment to use our watercolor brush or our watercolor brush pen and see if we can get the look that we want. All right, let's see if our efforts pay dividends. Ooh, maybe, maybe. It's really hard to tell until you kind of let it dry. So let's give it a minute. There's a lot of waiting going on, a lot of waiting, but I think we might be close. I think we might be good. It's still drying a little bit, but I'm kind of liking the 
softer blend that we're getting here, so might have found the secret sauce. Let me go ahead and do it on the other ones and we will reassess. All right, I have definitely achieved a more visually appealing appearance. They're not perfect, but nothing is, uh, but it's definitely much improved. So these leaves now have three colors in them and that's okay. I really like the tone that it added to. I like the inclusion of the red. I think it's just gonna really pop. Um, so now I want to go back in and do my green leaves. Now that we have a bit more color on the page, a bit more of these kind of like the real estate kind of occupied, we can see a little bit better what's left. So you can see we have uh, these sort of leaves that come to a point, and then we also have some leaves that are um, kind of teardrop shaped. So I'd like to do the leaves that come to a point and then maybe save the teardrop shapes for something else, something a little bit more special and maybe kind of a, the inclusion of another color. And I think I'll know better what that color might be once the green is down. So let's go ahead and do that so that we can kind of choose the, the next step of this. All right, that looks so good. I'm really loving the way that the green, yellow, orangey, red kind of combination areas look. They're so pretty. Um, I do want to disperse this color a little bit more because I didn't realize it when I was doing it, but there's only three of these on the whole page and it does feel a little bit stranded. So I think I might take that mauve purple and do the teardrop shapes. I think that'll be a nice disbursement. It'll make the purple make a little bit more sense. So I think I'm gonna do that. They're very small, so I don't know if I have an opportunity to really play. I might play with this. So let's just do like an all over layer and we'll just kind of see. I like starting in the little corners when I'm experimenting because then we can pivot and uh, do something different if it's not making sense. So let's let that dry here for a minute. I don't think I'm even going to add any water. I don't know, maybe just to maybe pull up some of that saturation because adding water actually makes it a little bit lighter. So we might, uh, we might do that in a minute here. All right, yeah, I think I am going to pull up just a little bit of that color with my brush pen. We'll see if it works. When it's wet, it looks darker, but then it, it dries lighter. So let's see. Yep, see, it's kind of lightening up just a little bit. So I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna do the rest of the uh, teardrop shapes in this beautiful mauve color. And just a quick tip, I like to go left to right around the page just because I'm right-handed and this is getting on my fingers. So it's definitely something that uh, stays a little bit wet longer than I thought it would. So just to keep your side of your hand from smearing anything if you're uh, right-handed, work this way, and if you're left-handed, work that way. I forgot I also have these little uh, tulip shapes here that we can do something with. On these same little teardrop shapes that we just colored, I'm going to just add some lines here. And it does kind of abruptly kind of taper, but I think that's kind of cute. Let's do that. I also want to lighten up the purple, dark purple, kind of monster that we made here. And I'm just going to, I think just add some like random dots and dashes cause that's what I do. Now I do want to go in and do these little tulip shapes. And I think it makes sense just cause it was the only place that we used it just to maybe take some of this, this darkest purple and uh, just do these down here. It's funny on its own, it kind of just looks like dark blue, right? <laughs> Did I use the right one? I also want to point out my paper is experiencing just a little bit of buckling. It's not too bad, but uh, definitely just something to keep in mind. The more water you add to paper that's not designed to have water added to it, the more it will buckle. So it'll just start to start to like kind of curl up on the edges, but it's really not that bad. Could have been worse. And if you want to, you can actually tape down the edges when you're working. I like to kind of keep the ability to turn it. So if you're gonna tape it down to something, just kind of good advice, don't tape it down to something that you can't turn and spin to get the best angles. All right, um, I do want to color this banner. So let's see what we have left. We still have a bunch of colors that we haven't used. 
don't know if that's going to be the route that we go. Um, the other idea that I had was that we didn't end up using very much this kind of peachy orangey color. We could try that kind of all over and then maybe add something like around the edges. That way we're not introducing a brand new color that's kind of jarring. So that's kind of plan A. But let's look at our color swatch and just kind of see if there's anything else that pops pops out. I don't think so. We could probably get away with like a light pink just because like it's kind of in the same tone and, and color family, but I think I kind of like the orange idea. These definitely aren't like markers where you can color like a huge swath in like really easy, smooth strokes. Definitely is a little bit more, uh, I don't want to say rough because that's not the right call, but it's maybe chalky is the right term, just the way that it lays down. It doesn't feel chalky when you're using it, but the actual appearance is a bit chalky. I'm not too worried about like coloring outside the lines and whatnot. Watercolor is kind of designed to kind of go where it wants to, and I kind of like when it breaks that that line barrier. So we might we might try that a little bit. All right, so that is that. Just trying to remember which which orange is which. That's why you always keep a keep a test page nearby. Okay, this one might be a little bit too close. Maybe we can just kind of darken up these edges a little bit. Adding another color and then kind of activating it with the water too will uh, also just kind of fill in some of these white spaces. Hopefully. Let's, uh, let's give that a second and then we'll kind of see what we can do with it. All right, let's, uh, let's give this a try. Let me get my brush wet but not soaking. And we'll just sort of see what, see what we can do. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about this. It's not, I think it's these chalky ones that like I'm just not a big fan of how they blend out. Some of them are really nice. Like I loved how the greens blended, but then uh, some of them are just not as, as smooth. I put too much water there trying to uh, get something going. Yeah, this one's gonna need a little bit of emergency surgery. Let's let that dry and then we'll, we'll come back and figure it out. All right, let's try something similar to what we did on our red-orange leaves over here. I'm gonna try kind of a middle color, which is the other orange that I tried um, before deciding on this darker one. So, and this one is nice and buttery, so I'm kind of hoping that that's the secret sauce. I do kind of like some of this lightness in here, so I'm gonna try to keep a little bit of it. Just lifting up my marker a little bit more than normal. I'm just trying to fill in some of these light spaces because the, the water does not like them. All right, let's let that dry. Give it a minute and we'll come back. All right, cross your fingers for me. We're gonna see, we're gonna see what this does. I'm really just trying to smooth out some of these areas that look a little rough. And I'm also trying not to pick up too much of the black ink that is the Look for Lovely, because uh, it is not impervious to this water. And I don't want to pick up any of that and make it muddy, but it is a little bit inevitable. So I'm just trying to minimize it. All right, that looks a little rough. Let's, uh, let's let it dry and see what happens. Lots of drying time. All right. Not too shabby. It is what it is. And anything we can't make perfect, we just cover in white paint pen. Right? All right. All right, here is my finished piece. I am not brave enough to attempt a background with these markers. I would definitely do maybe something with another marker, like just a regular alcohol marker, or maybe even some pastels over this to create the background, but I really kind of wanted to at least keep it, you know, the majority of uh, products uh, being these markers, just to kind of test them out, and I really liked them. I mean, they definitely had some struggles, but sometimes I blame myself for that, because uh, I'm not familiar with these. So, a little bit of a learning curve, really, really fun to experiment with. I 
love the brightness of the colors. That's definitely my biggest takeaway. My biggest A plus for these markers uh, is the color saturation. I'm somebody who definitely tends to use a bit more of a muted palette. So just kind of picking out some of these super bright ones, uh, some of the buttery ones, super, super fun to experiment with. Uh, so definitely that's the A plus component. The D minus component is just the fact that some of them were just a little bit chalky, which made it really hard to kind of blend out. Um, so I don't know, again, if that was maybe user error or if some of these, you know, were just maybe a little bit drier than others. I don't know what that was, but it is what it is. And I also really liked the paint, or I'm sorry, the, um, the water brushes that came with these. These worked really, really well. I actually like this one better than the one that I bought for probably 10 bucks just on its own um, a couple years ago. So definitely like that. It comes with two of them as well, which is really nice and uh, performed really well. So overall, definitely want to thank uh, Hippie Crafter for sending these to me. They were super uh, generous to do that, and I will leave a link down in the description below to where you can find these. And I also hope you guys enjoyed the video and want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today. Sponsors definitely help to keep the lights on here at Pencil Stash, so there will be a link down below in the description if you want to check them out. And thanks so much for watching, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks again to the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. If you like learning from me today, you're gonna to love learning from all the talented creators on Skillshare's platform. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with thousands of classes in design, art, business, and so much more. If you wanna improve your knowledge on any topic, Skillshare has a class for you, like this class, Color Theory 101 with Ariel Rassel. I highly, highly recommend learning about color theory You'll find it so helpful when choosing and implementing color combinations and overall palettes in your coloring. Now, premium membership gives you unlimited access to classes, communities, and workshops that are just right for you and your learning goals. So join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer just for Pencil Stash viewers. The first 1,000 viewers to click the link below in the description will get a one month trial of premium Skillshare membership. And with all the growth potential that these classes have to offer, that is a fantastic investment in yourself and your personal development. Act now for this special offer and start learning with Skillshare today.